Welcome to Learner's Academy. In this video, we're going to learn the distributive property in algebra, which is a basic concept in algebra. If you already know the distributive property in arithmetic, then you're familiar with the basic idea of how it works. The main idea behind the distributive property is that it allows you to multiply a factor by each term inside a group of terms that are either being added or subtracted. In other words, you distribute the factor across the individual terms of the group, multiplying it with each one individually. To refresh your memory from arithmetic, imagine you have four times the sum of four plus five. You can simplify it in two different ways. You can either first simplify inside the parentheses or use the distributive property to distribute the factor of four to each part of the sum. Both approaches will give you the same result. But in algebra, things get a bit more complex. We're no longer just dealing with numbers. Instead, we are working with unknowns and variables. Take this expression as an example. 4 times the sum of x plus 5. In this case, we don't know the value of x. It could be anything. Maybe 2, or maybe a completely different number. Since we don't know the value of x, we can't simplify the expression by combining the terms inside the parentheses. Our only options are to either leave the expression as is, or use the distributive property to break the group apart. Just like in arithmetic, we distribute the factor 4 to each term inside the parentheses, which eliminates the grouping. So we get 4 times x plus 4 times 5. While we can't simplify the 4x any further because we don't know what x is, we can simplify 4 times 5 to get 20. The distributed form of the expression is 4x plus 20. Even though we can't simplify these expressions into a single numeric answer without knowing the value of x, we can still say these two expressions are equivalent because they follow the rules of the distributive property. The distributive property works exactly the same whether you're dealing with numbers or variables. You'll often see the distributive property written in algebra as a times the group of b plus c equals ab plus ac. You might encounter different letters like x, y, and z, but the underlying pattern remains the same. This pattern tells you that these two forms are equal. In the first form, the factor a is being multiplied by the entire group, b plus c. In the second form, the factor a has been distributed, meaning it's multiplied by each term in the group separately. And if you're wondering, where's the multiplication in the Just remember that multiplication is the default operation. The factor a next to the group indicates multiplication, and when you distribute it to b and c, you're also multiplying each one by a. Although the rule is written with addition inside the parentheses, the distributive property also works for subtraction, because subtraction is simply adding a negative. However, note that the distributive property does not apply when the terms inside the group are being multiplied or divided. The rule is usually shown with two members in the group, but remember that it works for groups of any size. We could have a times the group, b plus c plus d, and the equivalent distributed form would be ab plus ac plus ad. Let's look at some examples that include a combination of numbers and variables to help us see the pattern of distributive property. 4 times the group, x plus y plus z, becomes 4x plus 4y plus 4z. 6 times the group, a minus b plus 2, becomes 6a minus 6b plus 12, since 6 times 2 equals 12. b times the group, x minus y minus 5, becomes bx minus by minus b5 or you can write minus b5 as minus 5b, as coefficient is written before variable in standard form. 
Whether you're working with numbers, variables, or both, the crucial concept to grasp is that the factor outside the parentheses is being distributed to each individual term inside the parentheses. And you might ask, wait a second, aren't these terms parts of polynomials? Good observation. Indeed, these groups we're working with are actually just simple terms in a polynomial. This is why understanding how the distributive property applies to polynomials is so important in algebra. For instance, consider this simple expression, 4 times x minus y. Here, x and y are terms in the polynomial x minus y. Each term contains a variable part, but no constant number. Applying the distributive property gives us 4x minus 4y. But what if the polynomial is a little more complex? Let's look at 2 times 3x minus 4y. In this case, each term already has a number part called coefficient along with the variable part. However, we can still apply the distributive property to multiply the factor 2 by each term in the polynomial. At this point, you might wonder, didn't you just say the distributive property does not work with members of a group that are being multiplied? Great question! Although the terms do have multiplication in them, the terms themselves are being added. So we are applying the distributive property to the entire term, including both parts, not to the individual factors inside the term. In other words, we treat each term in a polynomial as an individual member of the group, even if that term has multiplication going on inside of it. By distributing the 2 across each term, we get 2 times 3x, which is 6x, and 2 times negative 4y, which is negative 8y. So the distributed form is 6x negative 8y. Let's try a few more examples involving polynomials. 2 times the group, 2x squared plus 4x minus 3 becomes 2 times 2x squared, which is 4x squared, 2 times 4x, which is 8x, and 2 times negative 3, which is negative 6. So the distributed form is 4x squared plus 8x minus 6. Let's see another example. x times the group x squared plus 4x minus 2 becomes x times x squared, which gives us x cubed since that would be 3 x's multiplied together. x times 4x, which gives us 4x squared, and x times negative 2, which gives us minus 2x. So the distributed form is x cubed plus 4x squared minus 2x. Now that you've seen how to apply the distributive property, you might wonder, can we reverse the process and undistribute a factor? The answer is yes. Take this polynomial, 2x cubed plus 2x squared plus 2x plus 2. Notice that each term has a common factor of 2. It looks like someone already applied the distributive property to distribute a factor of 2 to each term. To reverse the process, we can factor out the 2, which means we group all the terms and multiply by 2. So the expression becomes 2 multiplied by the group of x cubed plus x squared plus x plus 1. See, you can use the distributive property both ways. So, if we got x times the group y plus z, you can distribute a copy of the factor x to each member of the group. But if you're given the expression xy plus xz, you can apply the distributive property in reverse and factor out the x so that it is multiplied by the whole group at once. Distributing and undistributing a factor are just ways of going back and forth between two equivalent forms of an expression with no change in the value of the expression. This process of undistributing is often called factoring out the common factor. Mathematicians don't typically refer to it as undistributing, but they do call it factoring. 
Sometimes the common factor may not be so obvious. Consider 6x plus 8y minus 4z. At first glance, you may not find a common factor, but upon close observation, we can figure out that each term has a factor of 2. So if we want, we can factor out the common factor 2 and rewrite the expression as 2 multiplied by group of 3x plus 4y minus 2z. And it works exactly the same way for variables too. What if we have the polynomial ax squared plus ax plus a? Each of these terms has the common factor, a, so you could undistribute or factor out the a. Notice that when we do that to the last term, which was just a, that term becomes a 1 because there is always a factor of 1 being multiplied by any term. So, in conclusion, the distributive property is a powerful tool in algebra that helps us simplify expressions and work with polynomials. It's useful for both multiplying a factor to each term in a polynomial, as well as factoring out a common factor from a set of terms. I hope this video has helped clarify the distributive property for you. To truly understand it, make sure to practice by solving some problems and applying the concepts yourself. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next lesson.